from Full Bucket Music and today I want to give you a brief overview of my screw synthesizer VST plugin which has been released some years ago but I frequently get questions from folks how does it work how does it create a sound and to show you how it works in brief I will switch to the init patch and okay let's start so the screw has two oscillators and each oscillator can only generate a sine wave. Nothing else, just a sine wave. But there are three blocks, independent blocks, called formants. And a formant block will shape the sine wave into something different. Or better, it will create a spectrum around that sine wave and print it on the sine wave at a specific frequency. This sounds pretty abstract, so let's hear and look at it. So, first of all, I'm using one oscillator and the first formant only. And I'm pressing a key, an A, on the keyboard now. You see the spectrum, you see the waveform. And now I use the spread parameter on the formant. which spreads the spectrum, as you can see. So it adds harmonics, obviously, to the bass sine wave. And the frequency where the spectrum is created in relation to the bass key that you're playing on the keyboard is controlled by the range parameter. And for example, at this case, in this case here, the spectrum or the frequency is created somewhere between the 12th and the 13th partial of the bass key that you're playing. And you can control that. So if I play this key, this this A an octave higher, the spectrum will travel along with the key that you press. Now this is clearly not a formant in the, in the strict sense that we know. A formant should remain at the same frequency. And this is possible here in the fixed mode. If I select the fixed mode, then the range parameter controls in hertz the frequency where the spectrum is placed. And it will remain there, regardless of which key I'm playing. So you hear that um, the sound gets duller as I press higher keys because the spectrum remains at these 737 hertz in this case, or lower now. Okay, there's a third mode, you've already seen that, the ring modulator mode, and if you know what a ring modulator sounds like, then you won't be surprised to hear the outcome here. What you see is that the spectrum is not only placed at the harmonic frequencies or partials of the bass key, but all around it and this create this inharmonic structure of the sound. Okay. Now we have not only one formant, but three of them. So you can mix them all up. For example, 
Now I'm adding the second formant. And I can control them individually. And of course the third one, I can add that as well. Now sound starts to clip, I have to reduce the volume. Okay, that's already nice and now be aware that you can modulate the frequency, meaning the range of each formant by two sources, one of the three uh, envelopes, one of the three elbows, the wheel, pitch band wheel, modulation wheel, some random stuff, or even the note that you press and so on. So let's go and have some fun here with envelope 2. And furthermore you can control the amplitude of each formant also via one of those sources here. So I can blend over between two formants, for example, using an envelope. So now just concentrate on formant 1 and formant 2. Lots of potential there, obviously. Now, I've, so far, I've only used oscillator one. I can also activate oscillator two for it to get some chorus effect. And I also can send the different. Um, output signals of the formants with respect to the oscillators to the different uh, amplifiers that I have here. And for example, if I go ahead and place the, uh, the pan of this um, am first amplifier to the very left and of the second amplifier to the very right, I hopefully create some nice stereo effects. <laughs> some another another fun here As you can already see, there's lots of potential here, and I have, um, well, some presets made for you, available for example, first of all, take some male voices singing an R. The idea is simple, you have three formants, and the formants are tuned in fixed mode to the formants uh, of the A vowel. It sounds synthetic, I know, but I think it's nice. And same is for the O. And so on. But there are also some weird, weird, weird sounds. Was that scary core?
else do I have? Yep. Play with it, download the screw if you haven't done so, and twiddle around with it and even I'm still surprised by, by all the weird sounds I can create with, with that thing. Um, it's, it's really fun. Well, um, thanks a lot and see you next time. Bye folks.